Here is another common stair building mistake. If you notice, we have the overall total rise between floors at four foot two and three quarter inches. And that's going to provide us with a seven and a quarter inch rise all the way up the stairway. And in this video, the upper deck sheathing and the stair tread materials will be the exact same thickness. And that thickness in this example is three quarters of an inch. And you can see where we've made the proper adjustments at the bottom of the stairway, which means you will reduce the height of the first step by the thickness of the step and then continue the layout all the way up to the top. And if you need more information on this, I do have books at our website on a variety of different ways you can build stairs. So make sure that you check out some of those books. Now here's the common mistake. And that will be when you change the thickness of the floor sheathing without making the necessary adjustments to the stair stringer. So instead of three quarters of an inch, we're going to have an inch and an eighth three quarters of an inch material for our steps, inch and an eighth for the upper floor or landing, creating a riser height for our last riser up here at seven and five eighths of an inch or three eighths of an inch larger and increasing the overall total rise of the stairway. And one way you might think would be really easy to solve this problem would be to change the thickness of the stair treads to match that of the upper deck sheathing. So inch and an eighth all the way around. What's that going to do? It's going to solve our problem at the top and create a new problem at the bottom by creating a seven and five eighths inch riser height. So instead of having the problem at the top, we now have it at the bottom. Another way that you might think you can use to solve this problem would be to cut three eighths of an inch off of the bottom of the stair stringers. And that's really not going to work either. Even though I'm not about to suggest you would ever get caught, the longer the stairway, the less noticeable it will be. The shorter stairways, you might be able to pick this up quite easily. So here we're looking at the stairway. Pay attention to right here because we're going to lower the stairway to create equal risers. However, the steps will now be just a little bit out of level. So you can see where the front of the stringer is touching the sheathing. However, there's a gap at the back and we're also going to have a problem at the top. And I left the floor sheathing straight. This isn't what you're gonna do. You're going to nail it and bend it right here. And trust me, I've seen this plenty of times where you come up to a stairway and the upper section of the floor is bent down a little bit. And of course the person installing the flooring can easily fix it by adding some shims here and raising the height of the riser to bring us back to our original problem. So to fix something like this, I would just simply take the overall rise between floors and just simply divide it into the amount of risers that we would have or somehow reduce the height of the floor sheathing to where we could use the seven and a quarter inch risers and have every step level to use the seven and a quarter inch risers and create level steps. And the reason why I made this video was just to bring something like this to your attention so that you don't make this mistake. Keep in mind the overall total rise is going to be the measurement between floors. And in some cases that measurement will need to be adjusted so that it is between finished floors, the finished material on the lower floor and the finished material on the upper floor. And hopefully that makes sense. Now I want to provide you with another video for those of you who might need a little more help when calculating riser heights. So let's go ahead and jump into that next video. In this video I am going to attempt one more time to explain how individual riser heights can be created for odd shaped or funky stairs. I've had a couple of viewers asking me questions about this. So most of the viewers understand how to figure out the risers for a straight set of stairs. And that can be done by counting the number of each individual riser. And in our case we have 10 of them. And then dividing 
10 into the total height or the total rise and this will be the distance between the lower floor and the upper floor and in our example we are going to have 70 inches for our total rise and if we divide 10 10 individual risers into 70 we get 7 inches and 7 inches will be our individual riser height and now you're probably wondering why do I need to do any of this and you don't you can simply multiply the amount of risers to find the height of a step or you can use a story pull and I have another video on that also and I don't recommend creating what I would call a riser ladder here however if you need to something like this can be done on a sheet of plywood or a couple of sheets of plywood just simply nail whatever plywood you need to some of the wall framing studs or use the shear panel if you need to and the benefits of having something like this will be to provide you with the top of the riser height for example if I have seven inch risers I can simply multiply seven times three to find out the height of the third step however if I'm dealing with fractions maybe 7.3 or 7.37584 then it might be more beneficial to create a story pole or a riser ladder like this one that way you can simply grab your tape measure and measure from the top of the floor to the top of the fourth tread instead of doing any type of math and when it comes to complicated fractions or long fractions something like this might provide you with a good way to handle this and I'm not about to suggest that you build a stair ladder out of whatever materials and then use it like this however this is just another way that I can use to explain a little bit better how this might work and if each one of these lines represents the distance between the steps and our distance is seven inches then you can see here how a stair ladder an imaginary stair ladder hopefully will provide you with the individual riser height location from the top of the tread to the ground and again a story pole will work just fine if you understand exactly what you're doing with the story pole so again you're looking for the individual height of each step off of the ground then you could probably do it with a story pole a little bit easier than you can with one of these riser ladders and here you can see where one foot nine represents 21 inches or three times seven so again is it going to be easier for you to use a calculator or a story pole or do you need to take it a step further and create some type of a riser ladder like we have here that will represent the width of the stairway along with the top measurement for each step and this could help you a lot if you're having a difficult time figuring out the overall height of a particular step or a landing and in my opinion I think this is where people get a little confused and the illustrations in this video might be a little helpful by rotating our riser ladder 45 degrees to create a few more points of reference that you can use as a beginner stair builder or even a professional who might be having a difficult time imagining all of this stuff inside of the brain and hopefully this makes sense if you are going to add another crazy step to your crazy stairway by creating the reference points again if for whatever reason they are needed and hopefully by now you are starting to wrap your mind around this because this is going to be the last example I'm going to use for our project here and by now you should understand how to get the height of each step by either multiplying or using a story pole or even with your stair riser ladder so hopefully this makes a little more sense to those of you who are having a difficult time once the stairs are no longer straight to figure out the individual riser height or the overall distance between the top of the floor and the top of the step and thanks for watching don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.